Smile and face. Still saying? Yeah. Well, that one was, yeah, PRC's been scary soon. We'll see. It's like that was never gone. Yeah. You missed Mr. Jack. He's definitely on the PRC. He's happy with. With us, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's a thing 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 that's a it's been neat. <laughs> okay. okay. Hey, it's 203. Okay. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and we'll begin with the roll call of uh, commissioners. Commissioner Fair. Here. Here. Commissioner Hughes. Uh, Commissioner present. present. And I am here, and we have a quorum. And we'll we'll begin with the uh, with the approval of the minutes. I'd like to request a uh, a motion to approve the minutes of our February eighth twenty twenty four meeting. We have a motion. So moved. So moved. Commissioner Fair. Seconded. Seconded. Commissioner Rubin. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. And I'm yes. And um, motion carries unanimously. The minutes will be posted on the commission's website. Um, there are three projects on the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, staff to the commission uh, will present the project meeting agenda and state their recommendation. Following the staff presentation, the committee will have an opportunity to ask questions of the staff. The applicant may then make a statement. Following the applicant's statements, members of the public may make their statements. Um, I'd like to ask anyone uh, other than the applicant wish to make a statement on today's uh, agenda items uh, to complete a public comment card and give the comment to another staff. Comment cards are available at the door. As a courtesy to other individuals wishing to offer comments, we ask that members of the general public uh, limit your statements to three minutes or less when the time comes for public comment on the item on the agenda. I will call the name of a card and ask you to make your statement. Please state your name, the interest, the interest organization, or company you represent, Ben. And we will begin with our first project, which is um, 10406 to 10408 South Maryland in the Pullman District in the 9th Ward. It is the proposed exterior and interior rehabilitation of two existing two-story Mason row houses and construction of a new rear addition and Joyce Ramos has a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subject properties are two row houses on the northern edge of the Pullman district located mid-block on Maryland Avenue, which is south of 104th Street. The building to the north at 10408 South Maryland is currently the A of the Randolph Pullman Border Museum, which was established in 1995 with the primary mission of educating visitors of the pivotal role of African Americans in the labor movement and civil rights. To advance their mission and enhance the facility accessibility, the owner is proposing to expand the museum into the immediately adjacent property to the south at 1046 South Maryland, as well as to construct a new rear addition that will include the installation of an elevator and stair tower. The buildings that were on the lots just north of the subject properties were previously demolished, making the proposed rear addition visible from the public rights of way and requiring review by the permit review committee. Just as a note, the two lots to the north are city owned and no work is currently being proposed. There is potential for a future phase of the work on these lots and would come back for review after further development. The property of 10408 has been vacant and continued to deteriorate over the years. It has experienced water intrusion through the roof causing exterior and interior damage. 
Permits were issued in January 2024 for masonry repairs to replace damaged masonry units. Roof repairs that included a new membrane and new composite slate on the mansard roof and the installation of double hung windows. As a result of the demolition of the buildings to the north, the north facade of 106 was missing, and the owner constructed the exterior wall with new masonry and windows as it appears today. The front facade of 10406 will receive the same exterior work that was previously approved 10408 to again include masonry repairs, roof repairs, and new windows. New panel doors will be installed at both entries. And staff recommends approval of the exterior work as proposed. Staff recommends the applicant provide large scale dimension and detailed drawings for each window type with the sill, head, meeting rail, mullions, transom bar, brick mold, and trim, uh, which will be included in the permit drawings, as well as a door cut sheet and elevation drawings for the new panel front doors that shows the design, profile, and materials. The existing rear wood porch will be demolished and a new rear addition is proposed to be constructed to provide an elevator and stair enclosure. The top of the addition will match the height of the existing north facade. Rooftop mechanical units will be installed in the addition and will be located at the back of the building. Staff recommends that the sizes and locations of the mechanical units be approved as they are minimally visible and have the least impact on the historic front facade. The elevator shaft overrun projects past the top of the parapet. It is proposed to be clad in concrete masonry units and located towards the rear of the building on the addition behind 10408. It is located as far back as it can be on the front and side elevations and may be minimally visible from 104th Street. Staff recommends that the elevator shaft overrun cladding be a material that is more compatible with the building and district, such as brick or fiber cement panels in a gray color and a non-reflective finish to further recede into the background. The addition is proposed to be clad in a reddish brick that is compatible with and complements the colors of the brick of the existing building. A brick brick pattern will be featured around the windows that will include a slightly projecting headers to provide minimal, I'm sorry, to provide visual interest and is differentiated from the historic building. The windows on the north elevation of the addition are proposed to be a pre-finished dark gray aluminum storefront system that features a horizontal mullion that suggests the pattern of a double hung window. The size, shape, massing, and location of the rear addition is no higher or wider than the historic buildings and is set back from the side elevation, and staff recommends approval as proposed. Staff also recommends that the proposed reddish colored base brick and the brick brick pattern on the rear addition be approved with the condition that the base brick will be a standard size modular brick. A custom perforated metal screen is proposed to partially cover the rear facade to provide a visual presence for the museum and define the location of the main entrance. It will feature images related to themes of the museum. The staff recommends that attachment locations be limited to mortar joints only. Uh, large scale details of attachments shall be provided in the permit drawings. The existing pen letter sign on the north side facing um, the north elevation that says A. Philip Randolph Pullman Porter Museum was installed without a permit and is required to be legalized. Since it is mounted more than 24 feet above grade, the sign requires a city council order, which triggers review by the permit review committee. Staff recommends approval of the existing sign as it is simple in design and limited to just the name of the museum. Additionally, it is mounted on the facade that was rebuilt and therefore not obscuring or damaging any historic material. In order to legalize the existing sign, a separate sign permit application should be submitted and included and include an inaccurate elevation section and attachment drawings with sign dimensions, existing conditions shown, and materials defined or identified. I'm sorry. No new signs are being proposed. The existing mural on the north elevation is being considered as a work of art as it does not say the museum name or have a commercial message. It is proposed to remain. Any future works of art will need to be submitted to historic preservation staff for review. It should not cover or obscure any significant architectural features. Any paints used should be vapor permeable or the mural should be applied on panels that are attached to the masonry. Any physical attachments should be located at mortar joints only to avoid damaging the masonry. So finally, staff recommends approval with the conditions previously mentioned um, and listed here on this slide. The alderman is aware of the project and is in support. And that concludes my presentation. Um, the architect and the owner are also here. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Great, thank you so much, Joyce. Um, before we talk to the owner, uh, do we have any questions for, for staff or for Joyce? Um, seeing none, uh, let's hear from the property owner. Is it uh, Dr. Lynn Hughes? <clears throat> Hi there. <laughs> so, thank you for convening and considering our projects. Um, 
she said it all. <laughs> but this project is, is important to us. Uh, and I believe it's important to the community. And we have done all that we can with our resources to make it happen. And we're just in the final stretch, hoping that this will move and that after this, you will support us. We've done a lot on our own. Nobody thought we would have raised three million, but we did. And so we we need support, even if it's moral support and encouragement. And the little money from you would help. But um, we, if you have any questions, motivation, inspiration, any of that, I'm sure we can overwhelm you with that because we only have 29 years <laughs> getting here. But we are grateful for the support that we have been given through Landmark's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. Commissioners, um, any questions? Um, first of all, congratulations. I think this is an amazing project. Um, I'm very biased. Uh, anything that's involving elevating and celebrating African American history, I 100% tend to down support. Um, the new spaces that you're putting into that back edition, um, what's going to uh, happen in those spaces? The second floor is going to be an extension of where we are. <laughs> more space. So the first floor will be dedicated to April Friend up and the brothers of Sticky Top Order. The second floor will be the Reverend Jesse Jackson Civil Rights Wing. Okay. And so that entire area will be that. The third floor will be program space and office space. Okay. Great. And um, I want to encourage you and your team. Uh, the other comment I had was um, you know, pending everything is heard today and stuff. Um, have you guys considered uh, adopt a landmark, applying to it in the future or working with the team? Well, someone actually told us about that and I asked a colleague uh, a week ago if that would program the still in effect because I think now's the time because we'll, we could use a little extra okay. money. Okay. And well, so keep that in mind if it comes across your desk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I second that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Uh, any other questions, commissioners? Um, seeing none, um, thank you. And uh, we'll move to the public comment uh, portion of this. And we have one public comment right now, and it's Mr. Miller. Hi there, uh, commissioners. Uh, Ward Miller, I'm the Richard H. Treehouse Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. We at Preservation Chicago enthusiastically support this expansion of the A. Philip Randolph Pullman Porter's Museum and the work of Dr. Lynn Hughes, the founder, who just uh, made a few statements. Uh, it's a remarkable uh, museum, uh, and it's really opened the door towards conversation about the importance of the Pullman Porters and A. Philip Randolph's um, history related to so many aspects and even the civil rights movement. I think without Dr. Lynn Hughes and the team here, uh, that aspect of the Pullman, now Pullman National Park may have been forgotten, uh, she has been a tireless advocate uh, in, in raising that awareness and a great partner um, in Pullman uh, and also with the preservation and uh, architecture community. So uh, we want to encourage uh, a yes vote on this uh, to, to move forward. Uh, the building is part of a Chicago landmark district. It's part of what we used to call North Pullman. Now we just call it all Pullman. And I think some of that's uh, due to Dr. Hughes. So we just want to say uh, thank you to Dr. Hughes and all of you for uh, your commitment to this building. This has been a building that's been vacant for 20 years. Uh, we were just at an event where uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson was honored uh, by Dr. Hughes. Uh, and as you heard, a portion of this museum is going to be dedicated to his legacy. So on so many fronts, yes, 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 we're fully supportive of this. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Mr. Miller, for your comments. Um, I don't believe there's any other comments on this item. Um, there being none, I'd like to uh, ask for a final discussion from uh, our commission. Um, seeing none, uh, if there's no further discussion, I, I'd like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendation for the project. Do we have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Hughes. Seconded by Commissioner Fair. Commissioner Rubin. Yes. Yes, and I'm a yes as well. 
The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you for your very good work. <laughs> And we move to item number two, which is uh, 1401 South Michigan, the third ward, Alderman Dowell, engine, uh, the former engine company, 104 truck three, um, proposed addition of a new canopy structure over an outdoor rooftop dining terrace atop an existing rear addition. Tyler Taylor has the presentation. Thank you. Uh, the former firehouse for Engine Company 104 is an individually designated landmark at the intersection of East 14th Street and South Michigan Ave. It was designed by Charles F. Herman and completed in 1905. The building is one of the first generation of firehouses that contained comfortable living quarters that allowed firefighters to staff the station in round the clock shifts. The building was owned by the city of Chicago until 1999 when it was sold to a private developer and converted to a restaurant, which is still the current use. In 2014, a fire destroyed much of the interior of the roof structure and the original wood windows and doors. The building was reconstructed under a scope of work approved by this committee in April 2015. That approval also included a new rear addition seen here at bottom left. This addition has a two-story portion clad in common brick and a one-story portion clad in red metal panels with an outdoor dining terrace on the roof. We have received a proposal to add a new canopy over the outdoor dining terrace, as well as a metal stair from the terrace to grade at the rear of the river, both highlighted here on the site plan. The proposed canopy is a flat roof steel structure supported by three slender steel columns along the north edge of the roof terrace and tied to the north wall of the two-story portion of the addition. In plan, the proposed canopy covers the entire extent of the terrace, but does not overhang the edge measuring 30 feet, seven inches um, along the side, fronting 14th Street and 24 feet along the rear. The canopy roof measures 12 feet, 11 inches in height from the roof deck to the underside of the canopy. And the canopy itself is two feet tall for a total height of 14 feet, 11 inches above the existing roof deck. This is seven inches lower than the parapet of the historic building. Four 48 by 48 inch skylights are proposed in the canopy arranged in square and set back at least five foot four inches from the edge. These skylights should be low profile so the tops are not visible above the roof of the canopy and information on the skylights themselves should be included in the permit drawings. The previous 2015 approval included an outdoor fireplace serving the dining area located in the middle of the rear wall of the historic building. This fireplace was never constructed, but it's being proposed again as part of this scope of work. The proposed design is identical to the one approved in 2015 and will be minimally visible from the street below. Exhaust from this fireplace will share the flue for another existing fireplace on the interior, and thus will not require any new chimneys above the roof line. Like the exterior of the existing addition below, the sides of the canopy are proposed to be clad in smooth metal composite panels with a dark finish. Staff recommends that the light symbol and minimal yeah, design yeah. of the canopy does not add any unnecessary bulk or clutter and will not overwhelm the historic building. The existing ornate metal guardrails and metal panel clad bollards above the deck are supposed to be removed by make way for the canopy columns, and new guardrails will be installed in their place. The proposed new guardrails are simpler and are, are compatible with the rectilinear design of the existing addition. Details of these handrails should be included with the permit drawings. Finally, a new open metal stair is proposed from the southeast corner of the terrace to grade. It descends along the rear wall of the brick addition with one switch back and the lowest tread set back 31 feet and six inches from the street. Staff recommends the proposed stair does not negatively impact the existing rear addition. Staff believes that approval of the proposed canopy and stairs will not have an inverse effect on the landmark building and recommends approval with, the uh, with these conditions. First, as proposed, the outdoor terrace shall not be closed. Second, specifications and details for the proposed skylights, cladding, guardrails, and light fixtures shall be included in permit drawings. And three, the skylights shall be low profile so they're not visible above the roof of the canopy when viewed from the street. Alderman Dow has received the proposal and is in support. The architect, Victor Fabso, and uh, one of the owners, Matt O'Malley, are here and able to answer your questions. Great. Thank you, Tyler. Any questions for Tyler, commissioners? Oh, there are a couple. Seeing none, uh, let's hear from uh, the architect, uh, Victor Fabso. Yes. You doing? Thank you so much for considering this project. 
And just, we just wanted to say that, you know, this will probably be much needed uh, outdoor space now since it is going to be covered with the uh, roof and providing the extra additional uh, escape from that second floor. So I believe it's quite beneficial for, for that um, building of safety and uh, to just the use. It's much better use of that space for sure. Uh, people could definitely enjoy the, 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 the views of the neighborhood and, you know, even in the hard times with a little bit of rain. <laughs> so appreciate that very much. Great. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Jopso. Um, Commissioners, any questions for the architect? Yeah, I, I know um, as far as the submission that's going to eventually be given uh, to the staff, but just curious what some of your ideas are about the uh, handrail and guardrail. Profile. Like, um, I know we saw some things in the rendering. So. All right. So, so I mean, it, it is. Uh, I mean, I think you also recommended. So, we, the, the existing handrails are pretty. Uh, I mean, a little bit more elaborate. Uh, and I think you recommended that it should be a little bit more simpler look. So that's that's what we're going to be going for more straight and kind of just um, like regular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, totally in support okay. of that. Yeah. So, okay. That's a good call. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Turner. Question, any other questions, commissioners, for the applicant? Um, seeing none, um, I'd like to move to uh, public comment uh, portion of this. Um, and I have one from um, Ryan Freeman, I think. Yeah, it's me. Uh, okay. Ryan Freeman, <laughs> from the Alder Tactile Office. She just wanted me to be here in support of the project. Uh, the owners and that we have been good stewards of this, this great building and they're a great amenity for the neighborhood. Um, so we are in support of the item over the years. Great, thank you for your comments. Um, I don't see any other comments uh, submitted on this item, and so I'd like to call on uh, discussion from our commissioners. On this. Seeing uh, no, uh, no uh, comments. For the discussion, I'd like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendation for the project. We have a motion. So moved. So moved, Commissioner Fair. Seconded. Seconded, Commissioner Rubin. Yes. Commissioner Hughes, yes. And I'm a yes. And um, motion carries unanimously. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the project. Um, the final item on the agenda is uh, 3712 North Hardy, the 30th Ward, Alderman Cruz, the Villa District. And it's the proposed new 16 foot wide shed dormer on the south elevation and rear addition. Joyce Ramos has the presentation. Thank, Thank you. It's good. The subject property. Thank you. Thank you. The subject building is a one and a half story bungalow on a 50 foot by 136 foot lot located mid block on Harding Avenue. The applicant reached out to historic preservation staff pre permit the proposal of a new dormer and rear addition in December 2023. The applicant worked with staff to ensure the design would conform with the Villa District Dormer guidelines, and the final design was received on February 23rd. The existing kitchen on the first floor is proposed to be expanded by 10 feet to the rear. A mudroom is proposed to project past the face of the side facade and will align with the face of the existing bay. The roof of the addition will continue the existing roof slope to the new rear gable. In 1994, the Permit Review Committee adopted criteria for evaluating visible new dormers in the Villa District, which was included in your packet. These criteria recommend appropriate locations, roof shapes, and cladding materials for new dormers. There are existing gable dormers on each side of the building. A new 16 foot by 10 inch wide shed dormer will be constructed on the south elevation behind the existing dormer. And the ridge height of the new dormer will be one foot lower than the main ridge height of the building with a 16 degree roof pitch. This will provide the minimum required headroom height for the second floor bedrooms. The length of the dormer is approximately a third of the length of the roof. The existing roofing will be replaced completely with new asphalt shingles. The exterior walls of the dormer and the addition will be clad in new wood siding with the lap exposure, texture, and color to match the existing siding. The architect provided a perspective drawing to show the visibility and impact that the new dormer and addition will have on the house. And due to the wide side yard on the south, the new dormer and rear addition will be visible from the public right of way. The proposed new dormer meets the design guidelines for dormers in the Villa District, and the rear addition is no higher or wider than the main house and will be minimally visible from the public right of way and will have a minimal impact on the historic buildings. 
staff recommends the location, size, and shape of the proposed new dormer and rear addition be approved as proposed. Staff also recommends that the new windows of the, on the dormers and rear addition shall be wood or clad wood double hung windows and large window details shall be submitted in the permit plans. Uh, the Villa Improvement League just sent a letter this morning to staff to inform us that they have reviewed the proposal and have no objection. That concludes my presentation. The architect is also here. So please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Joyce. Any questions for, for Joyce? Before we hear from the architect, let's hear from the architect. Mike, come in the Welcome. Yeah, I think that's me. <laughs> um, I wish we had something a little more prestigious like the previous projects, but I still appreciate your review and, and your comments on this. Um, Max and Julia, say your name. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike Messerly with Messerly yeah. Art. Uh, Max and Julia, who are the owners, uh, realize that they're in this, the Villa District. Uh, they understand the significance and the importance of landmarks and this, the Villa District guidelines, so they're you know totally willing to comply and do whatever they need to do. Uh, the, the site does have a, a few uh, challenges for us because it's a wider site and the, and, the, and the house is pushed towards the north. So we're pretty close. We're less than three feet to the north property line. So one of the other reasons that this dormer made more sense to be on the south side, even though it's a little more visible, uh, depending on what angle you're at. Um, but we um, did a 10-foot addition in the back that does not project past the existing bay or portions of the side of the house, and we tried to minimize the single dormer that's on the, on the south on the south side. Uh, the details will uh, comply. Well, the details will, will match what's existing. There are some areas that probably need repair, but we'll work with the owners to, to go back to as much of the historic that we can find uh, that's possible. Um, thanks for Joyce's work and your, your review of this uh, and helping us out with the project. Great, thank you so much for uh, your statement. Um, commissioners, any questions for the architect? Thank you for the yeah. sketch. It's nice and refreshing to see that. <laughs> it's effective in this case. It's <laughs> refreshing. Um, and then I guess did we had we don't. I have one public comment card from you, and you have no others. So we'll um, and uh, with that, um, I'd like to call in final points of discussion, commissioners, comments. Um, seeing none, uh, I'd like to request a motion to, to adopt the staff recommendation for the project. So, move Commissioner Fair. Do a second? Second. Second. Okay. Commissioner Goose? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, and the motion carries unanimously. Um, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good work. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Um, there being no further business, I'd like to request a motion to adjourn. So, moved. <laughs> Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner Hughes. And second, uh, second, second, Commissioner Fair. All those in favor. Thank you all. Amy is adjourned. Right. Is it already adjourned? It's yes, actually been very cold. Yeah. <laughs> I keep oh, waiting for like one of those emails from 